how often do you have a pushback saying, oh, I, I, don't, I don't feel comfortable being on video and how do you deal with that? Well, I think there are a lot of reasons why people don't want to see themselves on video. Um, I think one of them is um, we don't like the way we look. Mm -hmm. You know, we expect to look like movie stars and but even movie stars don't look like movie stars, you know. Um, I say give a movie star two weeks teaching middle school see right, what the movie star right. looks like. Um, the second thing is uh, we have a story in our mind about what's happening and for that story to change is uh, hard. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a book called Thanks for the Feedback by uh, Stone and Heen. Sheila Heen was at one of our conferences and, and she said that, um, you know, it's hard to change the story about who you are, but that, that, story, that activity of changing your story about who you are is what learning is. Mm -hmm. But sometimes we're defensive about seeing a different version of ourselves. For example, our story might be we're, really, we're like a super inspiring teacher, right. and then we, if we watch the video, we might be a little disappointed by what we see. And the third thing is I think in schools there's a culture of talk, more than, often more than a culture of action. So people will say, well, you know, if I get one good thing out of a workshop, it's worth it. And they, they invest in workshops, and, but no, no change really happens. People talk about change, but they don't really do it. Mm -hmm. Bob Sutton, mm -hmm. who's sometimes in the D school, he says, the trouble is people think talking about something is the same as actually doing something. Right, you know? right. So to me, uh, those three things, video, because when you push the red button on your device and you record the class, you shift from a culture of talk to a culture of action. Once you really see what's happening, you gotta, you gotta do something about it. So um, the other big thing is trust. Um, and probably that's the biggest thing. Right. When we first started to use video, all the teachers used it in our study. And, and we would present the data and people would, well, we wanna do that, but how did you get them to do it? So I went back to the coaches and I said, well, how did you get people to do it? And they said, well, we just asked, and they said yes. And I said, well, that's not much help. Why did they say yes? And they said, they said yes because they trusted us. And if they don't trust us, um, they're not gonna use the video. But if they don't trust us, the coaching is not gonna be that much effect that effective anyway. So, so it's not that the, them not wanting to use video, I think, is not about the video. It's about, it's about trust, especially, or other, other factors as well. And it could be they don't trust the coach, or they don't trust the system. And we've written about, I've written about trust. You know, it's, it means that the person we, we're talking to, we believe in their character. Um, we think they're honest and fair. They're reliable. Mm -hmm. um, they're competent at what they do. They're warm in their relationships with us. And they have our best interests at heart. Mm -hmm. Somebody I interviewed said, if I'm gonna be, if I'm gonna trust somebody, this is a crass way to put it, but uh, she said, if I'm gonna trust somebody, I have to know they're not gonna screw me over to trust them. Mm -hmm. You have those five things in place and people really trust. I think, um, I think then the opportunity for learning is gonna take place, you know. In fact, what we found is that it's more varies by school. I'm curious to see if you found the same thing, but it's not person by person, it's almost school by school. You'll, have a, you'll have a school where there's all kinds of video being used or there's none being used, or there's one or two outliers, but but the coaches are trying to get people to use video and people are really hesitant. And I think that more than anything else comes down to trust. We definitely see different school to school and district to district and even state by right. state. There's certain states that are investing heavily into people wanting, you know, using right. video and some of them are not. But the, the, the most exciting part for us is when um, we see people adopting video for their own uses right. because that makes them more aware of kind of what it can do mm -hmm. and then it's really easy to bring it into the coaching cycle. Right. You still need to have the trust. I agree with you 100%. Um, some of the organizations are building uh, PLCs where they're trying to get teachers to work with other teachers, master teachers or some of the teachers that are put in a position to help out and, and provide feedback. And it all comes down to trust. If, if I'm going to share something very personal and in some ways expose maybe what I'm doing in the classroom, because being a teacher in a classroom in a lot of ways is, is very isolating. You're by yourself, you're with the kids, other people don't see what you're doing there. But if you record a video and share, now you're bringing it all out and right. other people will see it. Um, in a lot of ways, actually, success of Swivel as a technology versus maybe some of the other approaches that people used with the installed cameras 
came from the ability of the teacher to control the message and control what they're sharing. Right. They can record it first, they can review it, and then they share the moment, moments or the areas where they actually truly want to have a feedback and they slowly build the trust. Uh, it starts with them looking at it themselves, right. learning and having those aga moments on their own, and then saying, this is the area I really need some feedback, this is the area I want to work with somebody on, and then they share that. <music>